What is up, everybody? Manja Moyo, Director of Community Engagement for ARP. I did try to do a Jason Thompson impression, but I couldn't get it out. Um, didn't have the energy like he does. But I am still not, not the Legislative Director. Joining me today is also Addison Pollack. He is also not, not the Legislative Director. But with us, as always, is Amber Marr, and she is the Legislative Director for ARP Indiana. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Legislative Director Talking Legislative Things. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Doing good. Yeah, thank good. you. Good, good, good. Thank you guys so much for coming on. And uh, Amber, we'll always get started with you. Let us know where we are, what's happening at the State House. Uh, how are you doing virtually? Like this is this is different for you virtually, uh, you know, lobbying for ARP Indiana and the stuff that we have going on. So fill the people in on what's happening and where we are. Thanks, Mandela. Um, yeah, the virtual space of lobbying uh, has been difficult. <laughs> uh, as you know, I love to be at the State House. It's where I live during session. I miss human interaction and getting to see everyone face to face. But honestly, it really has been okay for us. We are still getting things through. We are still making sure our voices are heard. Uh, and so we really, from <laughs> coming from being in person all the time to completely not being in person all the time, I would say it actually has been pretty successful. While maybe not mentally successful for me, <laughs> um, it has been we've been we've managed to do such a great job, and that is also because of our volunteers. So yeah, for yeah. sure. I, yeah. I don't think I don't think we would. I think you are obviously an amazing talent, legislative director, talking legislative things. Um, but the volunteers we have also do an amazing job of making sure the voice of ARP Indiana and the 50 plus is heard over there. So what's happening this week? Like what's going on? Absolutely. So. I just wanted to give a quick update and we just have a couple of bills to run through um, because things are moving sort of, if, if this makes any sense, it's been a hurry up and wait and then crazy. So <laughs> um, we the um, we just found out a couple weeks ago that the deadlines for committee second and third reading were moved up a week. So a lot of committees were meeting for the last time this week. So let's see, let's go through really quickly on, we'll start with broadband or high-speed internet bills. Um, we've got four of them and they're all moving, which is fantastic. We have supported all of them. I know that there are um, at least some legislators that think that there's language in a couple of them that can be merged in, into one. So you might see these bills, even though they're moving, all of them are moving. You might see during conference committee, a few of them get put into one or, you know, making sure that there, there aren't things in the bill that will conflict with other language in another bill. So uh, we've got Senate Bill 352, Senate Bill 377, and Senate Bill 359. They have all moved to the House floor and um, 352 passed 12 to 0 out of committee, 377 passed 12 to 0, and 359 passed 12 to 0 out of committee. So I think what you'll see is, is they will continue to move, but again, might want to watch the committee, um, I'm sorry, the conference committee process as things might get merged together. Uh, House Bill 1449, also dealing with broadband, uh, it has moved out of the House, I'm sorry, it has moved out of the Senate, because if you remember, all House bills right now are in the Senate and all Senate bills are in the House. Uh, it has uh, passed out of the Senate 50 to zero. So that one will go back to the House, they're gonna examine um, if they were okay with any of the amendments, and then we'll sort of start the conference committee process if that's where that goes. So, yeah. great news. Uh, we have here in Indiana really placed an emphasis on high-speed internet and making sure that people moving forward have access, that it's affordable, and that we can really start, especially since this was highlighted during the pandemic, that people can use multiple devices and have that bandwidth um, available to people, especially when kids were at home, when people are working remotely, and just that you know there's a lot going on. Probably also how you see my internet, it's not always that great. So I'm looking forward to <laughs> uh, better connections in the future. 
For sure. And that's and I think that was the, the, the point I was going to sort of shout out is that we've all sort of had an opportunity to see how um, important, you know, broadband or Internet access is to folks. And so, yeah, I'm really excited that the bills are passing out with, uh, you know, bipartisan support, which is something extremely important to ARP. Uh, and so, yeah, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you, Amber, for the great work. Um, what else is going on? Well, and really fast, Mondal, I just wanted to mention one of the things that we also like would like to emphasize is having high speed internet and having access and making sure it's reliable really does help the 50 plus population, not only for those that are still working, but for those that have been isolated or quarantined um, from their families and so that they can still stay in touch with their grandkids or their, their kids or um, just making sure that they have access to interact with others, just kind of how we were talking about when we have been home. Uh, and not being able to see people. So it's really important that you can still have that interaction and not be socially isolated. Oh, I think you are on mute. That's a great point, Amber. I think, um, you know, we, we our kiddos have to see their grandparents on, on video right now. So really glad that we can sort of keep that going and, and make sure folks don't feel that social isolation and, and all that good stuff. So. What else, what else do we have? What else is coming up? Yes, so next up is House Bill 1191, which is the local unit power to prohibit utility connection. What does that mean? I think That's we mentioned it. Name. That's a long name. <laughs> it is a long name and it's uh, pretty easy to understand. I think we've mentioned this in past um, uh, updates, but it is basically a bill so right now across the United States, there have been some local communities that have placed a ban on gas for utilities. Now that has not happened in Indiana, but I think one of the things that we really were keeping an eye on is that while Indiana, I'm sorry, while AARP, not just AARP Indiana, we are currently um, fuel, fuel neutral, but we are uh, wanting to make sure that things are sustainable, affordable and reliable. And so one of the things that we were concerned about when there were bans happening across the United States in local communities around gas and those and utilities that use gas, um, a lot of our members could be affected because you would have to switch to all electric, which can be a lot more expensive. So this bill would just place a ban on local communities to make sure that they can't ban certain uh, utility connections. And so that is moving through the process. It is scheduled for a hearing this week and we will continue to keep you updated. Could we call that, call that a ban of the ban? Maybe, is that a thing? It sounded like a thing. Uh, so we gonna that make it- That is usually what we call it. Ban okay. the ban though, yeah. All right, so good, good job again you know, making people, you know, again, I think I, I love pointing back to sort of livable communities. So folks being able to stay in their home, age in place, afford their affordability, um, utility affordability, all those things are important to us. So um, great, great work um, as well. So hopefully we can ban the ban. I'm, I'm gonna try to hashtag ban the ban. <laughs> And we just wanted to give a shout out to, um, I, we're not shout out time, sorry, I shouldn't have used that word, but we just, we are in a coalition that uh, everyone is working on this and that some of that uh, individuals in the coalition include the Indiana Builders Association, Indiana Chamber, uh, Indiana Restaurant and Lodging Association, Association of Realtors, uh, Manufacturers, the uh, Association, the Energy Association, Apartment Association. So it just, it, there really are a lot of people involved in this. Um, and it, that can affect all parts of a community. So, yeah, great work. Another, you know, opportunity. I'm hoping for some bipartisan work um, and something that's important to the, not only the 50 plus, but overall folks being able to afford their utilities and and all that good stuff. So, great work, great work again. What else is what else is cooking? Next up, uh, Senate Bill 292 is the publication of health facility reporting. This one is also scheduled for a hearing this week. And what does that mean? Uh, many of you heard us last year, uh, starting right when the pandemic hit and there was such um, a terrible situation and a lot of the, excuse me, <laughs> 
I have a tickle in my throat. Um, there was a, a pretty terrible situation happening in long-term care facilities. And so we worked with the administration. We worked with uh, the governor's office, um, the Indiana Department of Health, and the Family and Social Services Administration. And we really pushed for a public uh, web page where facility level data could be listed. Um, that would mean any long-term care facilities, assisted living, um, things of that nature, where all COVID deaths as well as COVID cases could be listed by facility. We were able to accomplish that. And in July, the uh, Family and Social Services Administration announced that they were going to create that website, and they did. And it has been up and running since about the end of July or early August. And they have continued to work on that and make sure that all of the numbers are correct and that it is accessible and easy for people to be able to search and make sure that they know what's going on in their communities, that they also know what's going on with their loved ones, and that residents can know what is happening inside facilities. So what this bill does is it simply codifies that dashboard. So it will just say that regardless of, you know, even if COVID slows down, which we hope, uh, we do think that it will be around and with us for a long time. And we would like that dashboard to stay. So basically what it does is it puts it into law so that that, that dashboard has to remain. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Dog on mute button um, gets me every time. Uh, so I think one of the things that we all remember sort of at the beginning of all this is, you know, there was so much unknown and so much information that, you know, people needed to know or didn't know we needed to know. So again, this is another great opportunity for us to be at the forefront of at least making sure that folks have the readily needed information that they need. Um, you know, to, to take care of, make sure their loved one is being cared for, make sure the folks that are working in the uh, facilities as well are safe and healthy. Um, so yeah, again, great job um, and really proud of the work that the state is doing to make sure that we all get out of this um, as healthy and as safely as we possibly can here in the coming days and weeks and months ahead. So great work. Thank you. And thank you to all of you and all of our volunteers that have continued to work so diligently on all of these issues. But if you don't mind, I'm actually going to toss the next one to Addison. He has been waiting very patiently for um, to talk about uh, one of our larger bills that we have been monitoring. So Addison, take it away. Yeah. Hey, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'll let Amber fill in any any gaps that I leave on this, but uh, House Bill 1001 is the state budget bill. This is the only bill that the Indiana General Assembly has to pass this session. So currently it is in the Senate Appropriations Committee. It is will it should receive a hearing this week. So, um, you know, if you're if you want to contact your legislator, go for it. If there's anything in the budget that you're concerned about, um, they're going to be hearing a lot of testimony this week. And um, we're following two major priorities in the budget bill. The first is choice funding. So these are dollars of last resort for uh, individuals who um, want to age in place in their home. So it's home and community-based services. Uh, these are state dollars and they're dollars of last resort. Um, so if you, you know, if you can't use Medicaid funding or, or other funding that's federal funding that's out there, other funding options, um, choice funding is available to help you, um, you know, do tasks in your home things like laundry, things like that, um, to help you live in your home longer. So uh, what, we're, what we see right now is that that funding, uh, that line item for choice is actually lower than it was in 2020 and uh, 2019. So um, it's currently at around 44 million, I believe, is the, the amount. Um, we would like to see that bumped back up to around 49 million which was uh, provided in the 2020 budget. So um, that's our priority. We're hoping to get that, that uh, dollar amount bumped back up to 49 million because we know how critical this program is. And we will be working with our um, Senate colleagues on that um, through conference committee, um, whatever it takes, we're really going to, to, um, to voice how important that program is. The other uh, issue that we're working on that, that is covered in the budget is the public mass transportation fund. And what that is, is the state funding mechanism for transit in communities across the state. Um, it is 
it has remained at 49, 40, 45 million. Sorry, I'm getting my millions mixed up. 45 million, um, and it started out that way in the House uh, Budget Bill 1001 in the Ways and Means Committee. It moved over to the Senate, and it is still at 45 million for um, the next two years. So we are actually really pleased with that. So it's been sort of a mixed bag with, you know, PMTF has kind of remained where we want it. Choice is lagging a little bit. We'd like to see that uh, bumped back up. But like I said, we'll be providing testimony. Um, we will uh, make sure that Hoosiers uh, 50 plus, their voices are heard on these issues. Um, Amber, did you have anything to add on those? Addison, you covered it perfectly. Thank you. Um, and uh, I really appreciate all of the work that, like I said, and I've I will continue to say it takes a village to help Amber during the session. <laughs> and so not only do my colleagues step in, but our volunteers are a huge help for all of us when it comes to this, especially with us being virtual and how difficult it has been this year. So with that being said, I am going to throw it back to Mandela to cover the next bill um, because I, like I said, Addison has been helping with transit and Mandela has also been helping with transit sort of on one of our local issues, but it's at a state level that we're trying to, um, uh, that legislators are trying to change things. So you've heard about it in the past, you'll hear about it again, but we're just gonna give an update really quick on Senate Bill 141, Mandela. Yeah, so Senate Bill 141, and so here, this one might have the shortest name of the bills that we've talked about outside of the budget bill, but, um, Senate Bill 141 is the Central Indiana Transit Projects Bill. Um, obviously, as Amber mentioned, bill switched over from the Senate to the House. And so that bill is now in the House. It was given a hearing, um, but the uh, chairman of that committee, uh, Roads and Transportation, um, held the bill. Um, I think, you know, that uh, was... Um, done i think they part of it was that they just didn't run didn't have time and, and all the good stuff to kind of go through the process so with that being said that bill um has a negative impact on indigo's ability to do its work to build out three bus rapid transit lines expanded bus service across the county and then um, a number of infrastructure projects that are included in that build out of the uh, bus, bus rapid transit lines so we are asking all of you to contact um, the members of the Roads and Transportation Committee uh, in the House and tell them to vote no on Senate Bill 141. So that's that's the task at hand. Um, we believe in transit. Uh, we believe that transit and mobility are important to ensure that people can age in place. And we built, we feel uh, that this bill uh, will negatively impact not only Indianapolis's ability to um, build out its transportation system, but I think a lot of other communities are looking to Indianapolis to see how that could work for them and be able to build out their own transit systems that work for their communities. And so we're continuing to, to sort of support the opposition of Senate Bill 141, working with a lot of our coalition partners um, along with um, making sure that you all are taking action on our behalf as well. Uh, and so thank you to everybody who has made a call, um, reached out to their representative um, to, to make their voices heard. And so we've, we've been um, really encouraged uh, by uh, you all's outreach um, and you all's action. And so please, please continue to contact um, the House of Representatives and especially the members of the Roads and Transportation Committee, uh, because we want to make sure that this bill does not uh, make it. Uh, I'm going to stop using the word die because I, I, don't, I don't I don't know. I don't like that. Uh, but it doesn't make it out of um, the committee. Uh, but more importantly, that it doesn't have an opportunity to have a negative impact um, on Indigo and his efforts to build uh, mass transit in the city. So that's my plea, that's my ask, that's the update. Um, we're waiting to see what happens next. Um, we, I, I did do a kind of quick check on the calendar, didn't see it. So hopefully we'll see what happens um, in the coming weeks um, with that bill, but we'll keep you all posted um, if anything changes. Uh, but yeah, keep keep making those calls and, and we really appreciate y'all's um, hard work and efforts. So thank you, Amber, for the opportunity to share. I'm gonna toss it back to you. 
Thank you. That was perfect. And I also, while you were chatting about this bill, I checked online just to make sure that I had not missed anything that was posted even this morning. And the House Roads and Transportation Committee has not posted another committee yet this week. So they don't have very many more days. Um, they can still post a committee before even next week. Um, I believe Monday and Tuesday they could still post. So we have a couple more days to get through. And um, we'll, we will keep an eye on whether that bill comes back for, for a vote out of committee or not, but we are really hoping to keep that at bay. So, uh, and then Mandela, I just have one more bill and we can sign out. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can do shout outs. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna make you guys go first on that. Um, so Senate Bill 276 is the last one I wanted to give an update on the, today. Uh, it is the powers of guardian after death. And again, this one, I think we've mentioned in the past and our volunteers have also worked very diligently on this. Um, when someone is under guardianship and they pass away, that guardianship relationship is, it ends um, upon death. So what happens is, is that if there are no family members, which is usually the case when someone is under guardianship, there is a reason why they're under court appointed guardian. Um, and so that individual will have to wait um, to have anything done for them at their final arrangements until they go through a very lengthy process of making sure that there aren't family members, there aren't spouses, there are no even, you know, on and on and on uh, beyond just immediate family members. And the guardian is listed at the very bottom right now in our um, law. So the guardian is the last person that gets contacted and then will end up doing the final arrangements. So especially during COVID, a lot of people were just waiting upon death for them to um, sort of allow someone to take care of their final arrangements. So this bill wanted to move guardian a little bit further up on the list so that that individual could be laid to rest quicker. Um, and while it did not land sort of where we had wanted it to be on the list um, because again, being having someone who is under guardianship usually implies that they don't have any family or anyone to care for them. And so uh, we feel as though that guardian should have the ability to um, sort of set in motion their final plans. But it we did get them moved up on the list, just not as far up. So um, it is now, and we're really excited because this will still help with individuals that have passed away and are just waiting to um, make sure that whatever they had uh, arranged and that, that they are given that that at, at, in the end. And so um, we're really excited it passed out of the Senate with an amendment to move them a little bit further down than we had them. I think we had them at number three on the list, and I think now they're somewhere around number seven but they're not number 10, which is great news. And so uh, it passed out of the Senate, passed out of the House, and is was returned to the Senate with no amendments. So it is just simply awaiting the governor's signature right now. So this will really help individuals who are under guardianship. It will also help guardians to be able to really feel as though that they can um, set in motion those final plans that someone had after they passed away. That's great news. Um, I know that's always such a heavy topic, um, and I know sometimes even our our, our team um, sort of always has sort of a, a, um, a, a tough go at it, tough conversations and very um, important conversations, but I think it's great work. Um, it's great work for family caregivers. It's great work for independent folks who, wants to, who want to live independently. All of those things go into play when you think about this stuff, and so yeah, thanks, you know, again, to our team, our legislative team, and all the work that they're doing to sort of get some of this stuff across the finish line. Um, this session has been very unique and different for a lot of us. Uh, Amber has struggled to go, not being able to go to the state house. She misses a lot of, and it's always not about like bills and things like that, but I think it's more about people and meeting and, and, and talking to some of the folks that she's built relationships with and friendships with. And I'll admit, I, I get to go every now and then and I miss it too. And I think our, our legislative team me, me needed it or miss, misses it just as much as we do because they get to go down every two weeks. So we, we, we sort of miss that part of the work. But Amazing work is still getting done. Um, we are still pushing um, and, and protecting the lives of 50 plus 
Hoosiers uh, and doing some great work. So big, big, big shout out to the legislative team. Uh, big shout out to Amber um, and big shout out to sort of all of us pulling together and, and making the best out of a, you know, tough or uh, bad situation. So with that being said, it's time for shout outs. Uh, I always love I always love this part of the show because you never know what's coming. Um, so I I will go to Addison. Hopefully you have some you have some shout outs ready. Um, and then um, Amber, I'll give mine and then we'll close it out with yours. Is that OK? All right. Hey, Addison. That, that sounds good. Thanks, Baba. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today, everyone. Uh, just wanted to give a shout out to, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Representative Jerry Tor for speaking to our legislative team uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he was really generous with his time and um, he's been a, a, you know, a champion of the Central Indiana Transit project for a while. Um, if, if you remember way back in 2014, he um, he was sort of the house champion on that on that bill. And he's he's gone back to bat for us on that issue, which we really appreciate. So uh, in brief, um, Representative Tour, thank you. All right. Thanks. So my, my I would do two shout outs. I'm going to do one that's sort of legislatively based sort of and then one that's sort of kind of fun. Right. So I, I think I've already talked about these folks already as we approach April, which is Volunteer Appreciation Month. Big, big shout out to our legislative team for 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 the help and work that they've done this year. Um, really appreciate their effort. Zoom fatigue is real, um, but they kept they kept the energy, they kept the fight, and they kept coming and kept asking good questions to all the legislators who joined us. So, you know, big, big, big shout out to them. And then I'm going to do one because there's a little event. I don't know if you all have heard of it happening in Indianapolis uh, this month called March Madness. Uh, I'm going to give a big shout out to all the little, the little guys that give, made some big upsets and busted some brackets this year. So big shout out to um, Oral Roberts. You know, y'all boys did it. Y'all made a big, big, big splash. Um, Alabama, roll tide, baby. Um, you know, we didn't get far, but we made it to the Sweet 16, baby. So I appreciate that. Um, so big shout out to all the little guys that that all the little engines that could that that made it through and, and bust some brackets this year. I know the big dogs wound up being in the final four, but at the same time, you know, it's always cool to see the little guys win every now and then. So big shout outs to them. Um, enjoy the games, everyone. Amber. <laughs> Those were good, you guys. OK, were- so um, I just have two quick ones. And uh, I wanted to, and I, I don't think I've given a shout out. So if I already did this, you guys, you're gonna have to let me know. I wanted to give a, a huge shout out actually to uh, Dr. Box and Dr. Dan, um, Dr. Dan Rusniak. They have done now two COVID-19 teletown halls with us around vaccines and um, making sure that our members and anyone that has joined those calls uh, across the state really hear uh, what it's all about and are able to ask questions. And they have just been amazing. Um, anytime we have asked or called on them to make sure that they talk about those uh, those things or try to um, provide the myths that are out there about the vaccines, they have come running. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out to them because we are grateful for their time and for the fact that they always say yes when we ask them to, to come in talk to our members virtually over our teletown hall wave. So um, just wanted to make sure I said that. And then also just to kind of close it out, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the legislative assistants at the state house. Um, they are individuals that work with the legislators and they deal with me on a regular basis when I call and call and call and I know they're so busy. And so when um, I just appreciate everything that they do and the fact that during even a stressful session where a lot of us are virtual and are probably constantly blowing up their email and their phone lines, um, they still answer and help us with a smile on their face. Um, and uh, I know that it can it can get rough there at the end. So I just wanted to say thank you to them because we're really appreciative of all of their work and everything that they do to help us connect with legislators. That's amazing. All right. That's it. Uh, JT, I mean, Jason, we miss you, brother. Uh, Hopefully you're doing well in your interim assignment. We haven't dug in deep on whether or not he's really working yet. So interim assignment. Um, Hopefully the not legislative director will join us soon again, as he's done before. 
thank you guys as always for watching the show keep out um keep an eye out for how you can plug in how you can get engaged with the legislator how you can support um or oppose some of the bills that we're following this session um again thank you all for joining us and that's another great episode of the legislative director talking about legislative things see you guys later